Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Coach Federi's podcast. On behalf of my partners, Ivy Coaches, I would like to welcome Sandra Corona here. Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Coach. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to have you. I'm so delighted that we connected in the last couple of months, and finally we got this、uh, kicking off. So, all the way from Mexico City, and right now you're sitting in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia. What a journey! Can you take us through the journey <laughs> from to? <Absolutely. laughs> yes, yes. So I was born in Mexico City,、um, raised in Miami, Florida, then back to Mexico for ten years, and then finally、uh, stayed in Houston, Texas. So there's a lot of moving going on. That's how I got here. My husband, through my husband, he's the expat for the company here in Saudi Arabia. Okay, so usually when you hear the word Houston. Texas,、um, and you hear Saudi Arabia is kind of directly related to certain segment. Now that's not what we're here for. We are here for a very interesting、uh, subject or topic, actually a focus area. If I would say global mobility, a lot of people will ask me, "What are you talking about?"、Um, and if I say a mobile, yeah, a global mobility advisor, right?、Uh, I think I would. Not be making sense to a lot of people either. Can you tell us what does an advisor, a global mobility, do? What are we talking about when we say global mobility? So thank you for asking because I constantly have that confusion with people、uh, related to technology, <laughs> and、um, or cars. Okay. So we're not related to cars. We're not related to.、Um, In the mobile or mobile aspects, but more of a moving concept of people from one location to another. So we have relocation of people or local employees, right, within states or other cities, and that is called relocation. Then we also have the global mobility aspect, which is moving people from one little city, state, wherever you want to call it. To a whole different part of the country,、uh, I'm sorry, of the world. And so, when you think about mobility, people have to think about it. When you move house, you know you have to change your address, the children's schooling.、Uh, you have to make sure you have all your paperwork and forms.、Uh, inform your、uh, utilities, set them up. Everything that you can imagine, but imagine that a hundred times, because you're now talking about visas. You're talking about your children's future, education, your education as the trailing spouse, right? It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female; you're still a trailing spouse because you're following somebody. If you're a talented person, if you're a person with skills, some companies offer programs where they help、uh, the the male or the female spouse go into the work source or, or work into、uh, in the company. So. It requires a lot of work from our side, but more we're trying to give it more of a human side, right? Because of the things that have happened in the world. So, human resources, international or global mobility, is moving a person from one location to a different side of the world in a big scale. <laughs> All right. So, for those folks out there who were not really clear, this is a very clear answer. And I believe more than ever, there's a lot of mobility right now.、Uh, if I'm not mistaken,、uh, definitely there's a lot of people moving around or traveling back home or whatever, you know, secondary home or third. Home. Now, we we you know we connected for a different purpose over、uh, the last couple of weeks. And if I would take global mobility and add it on to book club, mobile,、uh, sorry, global mobility book club. Yeah. Was what caught my eyes, and what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Now that gets people more interested and more, you know, like you know, curious. You know, what is the book club thought that came into your mind? And <laughs> what is the relationship? What is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, I was having an existential、uh, issue. <laughs> 
uh, because um, I was working uh, here in the Middle East um, for a chemical company and I had stopped working. I took some time off. And then suddenly during those three years, I did other things, but I knew I wanted to do more. And um, I wasn't ready until January when I started thinking, okay, I'm gonna get back into the workforce. What do I need, okay? And I thought that everything I knew about global mobility was still the same, but just a little bit of changes here and there, you know, the buzzwords and everything else. I thought, well, I mean, how much can it change? The global mobility that I knew of three years ago is nothing to what it is now. How did I find out? I started reaching out to people asking for help to say, hey, how did you achieve this? How did you get to this point in your life? What did you read? Who were your coaches? Who were your teachers? What did you read? I was not getting the response that I was looking for. Uh, to not say any names. <laughs> so I understand that people want to keep their secrets to themselves because it took a lot of people, a lot of effort to get where they were. And I realized, well, if I'm not getting an answer from people, maybe books. Let's look what books are out there. Let's look, what, what can I learn? What can I see? And then suddenly COVID, right? And then a whole new world opened where all of these seminars and webinars and all of these courses for free that were before private and cost a lot of money, now are free to people. I thought, okay, amazing. I get all this information, but they were all for managers. Mm. I'm not a manager. I'm just trying to live my life. I'm trying to get back into the workforce. So I thought, okay, let's look into uh, Middle East. Let's look what's out there. Um, I started finding books. I started founding, uh, finding authors, people that were out there helping other people. And then on top of that, realizing that, again, the nice, imagine me, you know, all nice dressed up in the office, talking with expats, welcome, goodbye, have a good life, enjoy your expat assignment, bye-bye. That was said, that's all I did. And I was making so much good money, coach until I realized that I really did not know anything again. And then I found a book, which I want to recommend to a lot of people. I wanted to keep it to myself, but I'm not going to be selfish because that's what the Global Mobility Book Club happened. I found a book that's called The Handbook of Human Resources Management in the Middle East. Boom. Nobody knew that such a thing existed. Even my friends, when I tell them, they're like, what? Um, it's by Pawan S. Budar. He never asked me to do this because I've never spoken with him, but I think he deserves the, um, the recognition. The book talks about human resources around the world in the, in the Middle East. And on top of that, Coach, it opened my eyes to something that has a lot to do with global mobility. When you're thinking about coming in as an expat and improving a company, you think I'm going to come in and do what I know and say what I know, and you're just ready to get in there. And suddenly you encounter this wall where you're like, wait, what's going on? And people are telling you, no, no, this can't happen. This is, you don't understand because people are not mentally prepared to understand a culture. And they don't see that certain countries in the Middle East are in certain levels or stages of progress. Not, not everybody is in the same level of progress. Let's not go far. Dubai. If you compare Dubai with Saudi Arabia, they're a whole different monster in progress. So I recommend this book to everybody that's going to come to work here in the Middle East. Because guess what, coach? I'm going to create a program, a global mobility program for people that want to move here to the Middle East based on my experience. So that's how it happened. That's how I thought a book club, if, if I'm a, I can only imagine that people are struggling the same way as I am in finding books and resources. And then authors, authors want to talk coach. They want to share, they want to give their experience. And I have yesterday uh, had my first um, uh, uh, webinar with my author, Angie Weinberger. It was amazing. 
I loved it. So I want everybody to have the same experience and I will be providing books, information, everything that people need to get into global mobility. Well, as a matter of fact, that you, now that you've gone into that, uh, that was my second question that, you know, what book would you give as a gift and, and why? Um, so I guess that I took note of that uh, suggestion. I'm going to look it up. Great. I also heard, you know, uh, saw your uh, announcement on, on the podcast uh, with Angie. And I think that that's a great, a brilliant start. There's so much there that to be done. And I think a lot of people can take it, uh, away a lot from that experience. Now, um, you're right. We, when, when expats, whatever they are, and obviously we focus about Middle East right now because we live in this, in this region, um, people are not prepared. Uh, uh, companies do not prepare people. Uh, they give them a handbook or a handout on, on how to behave in, within that company and where mm -hmm. to find Starbucks and perhaps find the, the, yes. the, the closest parking, non-paid parking. However, mm -hmm. they don't um, necessarily uh, do an induction into the culture uh, of, the, mm -hmm. of the country, the city. So uh, hats, hats, you know, hats off for that. Uh, initiative and I see this initiative growing and growing as um, in the next months to come and I'm happy to be there uh, to see it happen as well. One thing that happened very recently was your um, engagement with the HRM Middle East Summit which is the Human Resource Management Middle East Summit. Now this is the latest announcement that you're gonna attend uh, um, as a speaker this October between 11th to 15th uh, when yes. this um, summit kicks off digitally. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations, first of all. And <laughs> how did this happen? And what are you going to, what are you going to bring on? And what do you expect? What do people have oh, to Oh, coach, about? I'm going to be very honest with a lot of people there that think that this only happens to um, some kind of special person. I, I never imagined I would be here. I was just starting a little book up. <laughs> And it just exploded. People have accepted it so well. And I got to meet, um, I had the opportunity to attend the HRM India Summit uh, last month. And it was a mind blowing experience. People, talented people sharing experiences. Again, authors, um, you get to learn practices and it opens your mind to culture right? Because that's the whole purpose. You have exchange with other people. And uh, the person that is the owner and manager of the program, she lives here in Bahrain, right across the causeway, wow. right? And I thought, I'm just going to stay in touch with her. You know, it doesn't hurt. And uh, to my surprise, she said, hey, let's talk. Where are you located? Let's talk. And we started talking. And I, I just had started the, the book club. And when I started talking to her about what I was doing and thinking about doing, and it just, you know, it rolled like a snowball. That's how it felt for me. It's, it's been one thing after the other, and then it's just growing to this beautiful snowman that I hope it turns out to be, right? Um, and it just needs to grow and grow because people um, want to hear and know, and it's all about people right now, improving lives. And that's what the summit offers improving and she felt that what i was offering what she read was that improving lives that's how it happened <laughs> and that's i believe that's where most successful stories uh, have in common that uh, it, it happened because you took a step and i think overthinking things never allows you to kick it off uh, so congratulations also on this and we look for, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enroll, as I mentioned to you offline, I'm going to enroll to this uh, summit and I, I look forward to hearing you speak on that. Thank you. Now, if somebody would be graduating or has graduated this summer, let's say from just out of example, uh, Universidad del Valle in Mexico. <laughs> That's where you graduated uh, yes. with a Bachelor of Science. But let's say somebody just come, came out of the university or coming soon. What is one advice you would give that person? Um, to listen to, and one advice not to listen to or take in, in you know entering the the world of of, of work or the professional world. Uh, to enter the world of global mobility, and on top of that, to move here to Saudi Arabia. That could be it. What could they take as an advice, or avoid, if you so like. 
Um, so what I would tell people, um, first of all, let's, let's start with global mobility. What I would tell people is that soft skills, yes? Um, I've always said it. I didn't know I, I, I didn't know I was onto something. It just made sense to me that one of the most important things for you to be successful in a service um, uh, business, because that's what we are, yep. is soft skills. If you don't have those soft skills, that's okay, because you can develop them. And that was another reason why it got me to the book club. So I'm thinking, well, I'm lacking this soft skill. What can I do and how can I develop it if I don't have the money to attend the seminars? Well, there's books, right? So you develop those skills. Skills are usually what you have already and you learn to develop them. So it's a matter of you to understand what you know. Now, going here or coming here to Saudi Arabia, I would say forget about everything you've heard. Forget about it because no one location is the same. Yes. And so forget about what you heard and then start watching videos of seminars. Listen, ask questions, inform yourself. But most of all, coach, I would say prepare yourself for you to be able to excel in that culture. Learn about culture. If you don't know culture and you believe that your diploma from Universidad del Valle de Mexico is going to be enough, it never <laughs> is. Yes, respect the culture. You are no longer in your country. So to me, my best advice is forget about everything and start reading about culture. I think that's one piece of advice that can never get uh, outdated. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I think it's a strong one. And yes, uh, I think expats, whatever they are, and especially uh, you know, talk about experience. We tend to forget that culture is yes. not language and vice versa. So culture is something that you really, really need to um, you know, kind of dive into uh, yes. and understand how you know, one country, just because it's neighboring another country, speaks the same language, isn't the same at all. May I add something, Coach? I of think course. this is something. I was talking with a friend this morning, um, and one of the things that I would like for people to remember when coming here to the Middle East is that culture comes with um, tribes. It's very important that you understand the tribes here. There's, there's this whole history, right, in the Middle East about the importance of tribes. So I believe that the people that are from Australia have a little bit of better understanding when they come here. So they, they know exactly where, they're, where they have to go. So if you believe, okay, well, I know everything about culture. You still don't. <laughs> so that is one survival skill that I would like to tell people. Religion, culture, tribes, uh, understanding. And culture is not what you think it is. It's so much more. So much more. I agree with you. I think uh, most people uh, stop at the word inshallah and they think they know the culture. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear that a lot and they're all misused. And yes. With no context. So. For, for those folks out there, go beyond the word inshallah and understand what cultures you're actually getting yourself into. Um, it might be worth doing so, as, uh, as Sandra says. Now, all of us get to a point where we need to find our balance and our focus again. What do you do when you're overwhelmed? What does Sandra do if, if you know, is there too much of everything and then you just got to get back on track? Is there something you kind of um, have found in your life that this gets you back on track? If you want to share it with us. Yes, actually. Um, so a lot of the times when we feel overwhelmed is obviously we have put ourselves in that position because we, we want to do so much in so little time. Well, you have to step back and know it's okay. There's whatever ideas you have in your mind, it's better for you to sit down, 
grab a notebook and start writing what you want to do. I have never thought that I was going to do that, really, because you have all these things in your head, because that's what overwhelm means. You have all of these ideas in your head, and you want to target them. You know, you want to say, oh, I thought about this, so I better contact this person, and I need to do this. Oh, so I'm going to send this email. Stop. Stop everything you're doing and write it down. I, um, some sense, believe it or not, sense take me back to a moment of relaxation. And what I do is that I'm going to put on my pajama. It doesn't matter if it's four o'clock in the evening. I put on my pajama and I grab my notebook and I start writing. And sometimes it also helps most of the times I have to say, take a shower. It helps so much just to cool down and think, put your ideas. And that's it. That's what helps me write down, take a shower and put on your pajamas. Because when you're comfortable is when your mind starts calming down. It's like your mind starts thinking, oh, OK, I need to calm down. That's right. So anything that comes to you in your mind after that moment is going to be calm and it's going to start making sense. That's what helps me. A great piece of advice and a more a very special one in the sense and also the way the journaling and the writing i think probably should be one thing that they should implement for right from the start in schools to yes. teach kids that reflecting on what you do on a daily basis not on a monthly basis on a daily basis is really strong mm -hmm. it, you know it really puts you back on track and uh so yeah thanks for sharing that now have you gone like in the last let's say it's last three four or five years is there something new that you've uh, come across some new habits, new beliefs that improve your life? Oh, yes. Oh, tremendously. So um, if there's any Mexicans out there hearing, they're going to agree with what I'm about to say. In the Mexican culture, uh, there's not much teaching about emotional intelligence. Um, our feelings are very out there. We just, you know, we're very vocal and everything is drama and everything is, oh my God, it's big because you see it in the soap opera, you know, soap <laughs> opera. It's, it's there, okay? And we're giving to drama. So um, I grew up with that. I grew up with a, a, a family, a father that was military, a mother that was very young. So she was more busy doing other things. Um, and I grew up without having control of my emotions. I never saw how important it was until I started growing up and I started going through relationships and I would sob for months and I would be like, this is not normal. This is not normal. How can I do this? Then I, you know, you go through life and then you start getting a job and then you start worrying. You notice that it's no longer a one or two day thing. You start worrying for weeks and, and you, you have all of these emotions you're thinking over and over and over instead of finding a solution, which is what emotional intelligence gives you. Stop dwelling over things. Find a solution and offer it. Or two, which is another thing that it was like, oh my God, yes. 90%, if not 95% of our worst scenarios that we're playing in our minds never happen. <laughs> just stop and think about that. <laughs> so most of our uh, of the issues that that I had in these past years were be, was because I didn't have emotional intelligence. I didn't know how to control that. I didn't know how to stop and think and say, does it really is it really worth my time and my effort? Because you have to also think about your time as money. I never saw myself as that. I never saw myself as a person that every second or minute that I spent worrying about something was money, right? And um, think about your time as money to organize it and say, how many of these things really have the importance that I think they do? Third is, you know, do I, is there really a solution to it? No. It, it doesn't. So let 
things usually solve themselves. They usually do. And then four, if they, there's no solution, you need to come up with ideas and offer them. Have some, uh, what they call it, um, give yourself that responsibility and accept that you have a role of responsibility in it. You, 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 but you let the ball drop. Now, what are you going to do, right? So I learned emotional intelligence. I learned that speaking fast is not communicating. The good communicators speak in 110 and 150 words per minute and enunciate. <laughs> Stop using emojis. Oh. That does not communicate. You need to speak with people. And we have missed the opportunity, Coach. So that's what I have learned. And I am so grateful for that. Um, and the one last thing is that people have to be able to accept their feelings. Because one of the things that we don't do is that we know that there's something wrong, but we don't want to accept that it's that it feels wrong, right? Why? Because we have grown into a culture where if you show your feelings, you're weak. If you show your feelings, you are a complicated person. If you show your feelings, oh, you're just a woman. Um, and so you're labeled weak or problematic. And I think we have given ourselves the opportunity now to say, you know what? It's time for us to accept that I'm feeling bad about something. What is that feeling about? How am I feeling about it? Accept it because we are in a in an industry about service. So if you don't understand yourself, if you don't come into terms with your feelings and you don't have emotional intelligence, you can't help anybody really. So I hope this helps people out there that that have the same feelings as I do to understand that there is out there help and there is a word for that feeling and you need to learn how to deal with it right in the best way not shut it down deal with it i think it makes That's sense um, uh, you know there, there was times where a couple of years ago we heard a lot about the emotional intelligence uh, yep. it was everyone was talking about emotional intelligence it was almost uh, a punchline for for big organizations mm -hmm. to say we know what it means we know how mm -hmm. to act we look mm -hmm. at our associates with an emotional intelligence and emotional intelligence is much import, more important than the IQ of a person. Now, mm -hmm. looking at the reality of what happened a couple of months, um, mm -hmm. I personally have seen very few companies which actually use emotional intelligence oh, in deciding yes. the fate of a lot of people um, going back a few steps. But to your point, yes, I think emotional intelligence goes a long way. Uh, mm -hmm. And as, as you mentioned, the, the, weak, you know, the kindness and the, is, is always stamped as weakness, which is not the fact. And society has a responsibility. Um, you know, uh, families have a responsibility of growing that caring character, which means that if you're caring and you're kind, you actually can become a very, very important individual in that community and that society. Uh, not that yeah. you become a weak guy who sits in the corner and, you know, and feels free for himself. Or herself, Correct. Uh, yes. and the, and the fact that you know kindness or softness is a feminine thing also is now taking a big big step forward, saying stop that nonsense. Yes, yes, that's nothing to do with it. Uh, we just saw statistics from um, world leaders, which were female, which actually got away with leading their countries and their governments much more healthier out of this pandemic than men did. Now that's the statistics. I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. Into details because I don't have the numbers, but I've, I've read it somewhere. Mm -hmm. It was um, mm -hmm. very, very authentic. So, right. back to the book club. If I would say you have a big, gigantic billboard free of charge, hundreds and millions of people will see that, will be able to see that billboard. What message would you like to transmit about your book club? And it's free of charge. It could be a <laughs> is an opportunity of a lifetime. It's free, 
you can use it as you want. You can put a word on it. You can put a quote on it. You can put pictures on it. What would you transmit and why? I would say that put on a jacket every day, get up, get out, and go and make this world a better place. Each one of us has a responsibility to do something because together is the only way that we can move forward. That is my message, free of charge. We're going to run it for a week, and we'll see the results. Um, I think it's a great, um, great message that everybody has a responsibility. I think that sometimes doesn't resonate with everyone. It's like saying, yeah, I, I can't do anything. You know, it's in someone else's hand. So get up, rest up, show up. And some, that's a punchline from somewhere else, but it sounds so much resonating with how you said it. Put the jacket on, get out there, and you know, make a change, uh, make a difference. Um, so who are the people in your life that inspired you to become the person you are, to make a change, or the person you are today? Um, so it has been my husband. Incredibly, he um, has given me so much support. I know that a lot of people say this, but truly, it wasn't everything I've tried to do in my life. He's always been there. Like if I want to go diving, he goes out there and buys me everything I need. And he's like, there, there you go. Go diving, go do what you want to do. I wanted to do a cooking channel. He gave me, bought me everything. Go ahead and start filming, you know, do your thing. So everything I've been wanting to do, he has given me the tools. But what has made the difference right now, coach, is that I didn't realize that soft skills that he had, that I was lacking. Uh, when when I, was, I was standing right here, I remember, I was standing right here in the, in the door, and I was telling my husband, honey, there's a, people don't want to give me the information that I need. And he's like, well, what are you going to do? I was like, well, I have to go and buy books. How many books do you need? I said, I don't know. What is, I mean, you know, he started guiding me. And then he's like, and what are you waiting for to start? I was like, you know, you're right. He's like, you know that the, the, the missed opportunities happen when you think about it too much. Stop thinking about it and do it and, and just figure it out because this is not a business. This is something that you want to start. It's at no cost to you. It's a cost to me because he's going to, you know, he said, I'm going to buy the books. But you have to start somewhere. And then just do your thing, read, start informing people, let them know about what you're trying to do. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be people that respond. And to my surprise that evening when I was talking with him, he said, have you informed anybody? I was like, no. He's like, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I, just got, I just sat down and I started sending uh, you know, messages, questions to people on LinkedIn, a poll. And to my surprise, there was people. And currently, as a, a, a book club, um, it's very nice to have a cozy, cozy book club. But there's, um, there's options for everybody, right? Because you have inspirational, you have comp and band, you have uh, relocation, you have um, recruitment. There's so many areas that we need to cover that currently we have 95 people. But... You and I have talked about it. You have people, but not everybody has the time or the opportunity to participate. So we're looking for participants. We're looking for people that inspire others the same that my, way that my husband inspired me. Inspire others. Don't keep it to yourself. You know, my husband was my inspiration. Definitely. And my dogs, believe it or not, my dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can believe that. I mean, I think... Uh... Pets can be great. I mean, not talking away, not talking, taking away the job your husband is doing, but <laughs> on a different level. Um, yes. Quite, uh, let's say both of you are very um, lucky in that case. I'm sure he's uh, as lucky as you are. And it's nice to hear that you know, inspirational person uh, is someone that you actually you know, share a life with. Uh, as a family. Yes, um, correct. That's important. But I do agree that as a very famous business innovator in aviation said once, get the job. And then learn how to do it. 
Um, so <laughs> some people, you know, just some people get, you know, a lot of time spent on how to do things. Yes. They never do it actually, but they just they become perfect yes. in knowing how to do it, but they never put it into action. So thanks for that advice. And if people out there are listening, which will they surely will, do it. You know, yes. Nike sold the idea, just do it. Yes, correct. correct. It's, on a, exactly. it's on a pair of shoes or a t shirt, just do it. And, and you know what, a coach, uh, one of the things that a lot of people have been saying is that people, um, will buy why you do things okay and 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 actually um simon sinek has repeated it but it wasn't him the original person that said it and sometimes what i'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter how old the story is is how you deliver the message it's what you're trying to do people will believe you they want to trust you. So go out there and do it. If you have something you believe in, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm nobody special. And suddenly it just became something so special because I have something to offer. So, yeah. Just do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're almost at the end of the podcast, but I've got two questions for you which are important uh, as yeah. anything else. Now, one of them is... Uh, uh, Tricky one. Now, we, we learn through failure, no doubt. Which failure or apparent failure for you has been uh, a failure which set you for a bigger success later on? Can you remember one or some? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you, perhaps you have one or a couple, but which one would you share with us? And what was the success that came out of that apparent failure or failure? Um, one of my failures was taking things personal. Um, when you're in a, in a interview in global mobility, one of the things that will get you the job supposedly is when you say, I don't take anything personal. Why? Because it lets uh, your managers know that nothing that comes back to your because you're a punching bag for expats that's what you are you're you're the spock of global mobility right so there you are the person that they're going to come to with their frustrations family issues everything so be ready to be their punching bag in a good way so i would say oh no i don't take anything personal i lied i lied just to get the job because i didn't have emotional intelligence so you know linking things don't lie um yes you do things you do take things personally so what are you going to do to solve it what are you going to do to fix it what i did and i was wrong because i was never giving the tool or the solution was what courses are out there for you to solve it if you know you have a, 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 a an issue or something that you're trying to fix Go out there and look for it. That was my failure. And two, communication. Pick up the phone. Talk with people. There's The worst thing that you can do is write long emails believing that just because you explained everything in detail, people are going to understand it. No. You, you miss people after the eighth second. That's it. <laughs> That's your attention spam of people. So pick up the phone and talk because even a smile, like everybody says, it sounds so used, but it's the truth. A smile through the phone is communicated. We can feel the difference. And I'm pretty sure people feel it when I'm smiling here. So pick up the phone, call people, call your loved ones, let them know that you care. Try to understand. Be honest with yourself. That's, that was my failure. I was not honest with myself. And so I failed, and not one time. I failed in every single job because I was not honest. So now that I'm honest with myself, I'm doing things. I'm accomplishing things because you're, you're ready to accept it. So nobody's going to learn if they're not ready to accept 
right? It doesn't yes. matter how much you, you push them and you give them all the information. If they're not ready, it's, it's not going to hit them. So be ready. That's what I have learned. Those are my favors and true, honest favors. <laughs> well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being, um, with failing, first of all. And uh, it, takes, it takes time. You know, um, we hear that a lot when we are... Uh, uh, in, in a job that uh, people tell us, don't take it personal, uh, you, you know, mm -hmm. it's nothing personal. What we don't see is people get, telling us, how do I not become personal on a matter? Mm -hmm. And what is personal and what is not? On the second, mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, communication is an ongoing uh, dilemma. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, before, I think the emojis uh, were the worst thing that could happen in the world of communication, but the best thing that could happen to people who had little to tell you. Um, because they put all their emotions in one emoji. And this morning I had a coffee with an old friend and we were talking about how emojis save the world for people who don't have the words. Because uh -huh. they send you an emoji and they think they communicated with you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh -huh. yeah, thanks for those two. Those are very important. Pick up the phone. There's nothing more than a human voice, mm -hmm. voice to voice that can, that can resolve matters and that can uh, bring things to a, to a solution. Uh, yes. So yeah, thank you for that. And last question would be bounce back to you. So if you would be in my shoes now, I would ask Sandra a question that I didn't ask. What would that question be? And obviously, kindly answer that question yourself. <laughs> um, how many books do you read per day, Sandra? <laughs> I love that one. I love that one. Um, you snatched the question of which is the best book you would give people, which I wrote here. Um, so how many books do you read, Sandra? So I just posted on the book club that I have ordered 17 books. Wow. Uh, that doesn't mean that I read them all at the same time or one per day. No, because I want to let people know, because there's also like a reading shame thing going on <laughs> in the world. Don't be ashamed of how much you read and what you read in a book because the secret in the book is not the book itself it's why you bought the book right and it could be just one section of the book absolutely absolutely and that one section is what you need to start reading that's where you need to go go and start reading that book just open it and do what you have to do then go for the next book and start reading. Now, the strategy here, coach, is where you place those books. And I'm going to say something shameful because I think it deserves it. Let me guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's one book that you should keep in the bathroom <laughs> because everybody spends time in the bathroom, right? I can't agree more. People say they don't have time. I think they can't find time. <laughs> so keep a book in strategic places yeah. where you spend time. Because everywhere you go, you're going to see the book and you're going to say, oh, oh yeah, that's right. Bookmark it and move on to the next place where you are. Put one in the living room, in the bathroom, in the bedroom, in your studio, you know, and then. In the car. Yes, uh, well, that would be an audiobook. <laughs> Ideally, an audiobook, people. Uh, but also, importantly, is to make notes in those books. I have learned because of the kind of person that I am. I have ADD. So, for all of those people that uh, think that ADD people can't accomplish things, yes, we can. Um, write things down on your books because once you write them down, it makes more sense and they stick with you even more. So I, I read books different per day. So I currently have one, two, three, four, five. I put them here so that I knew about them. I have five books that I'm reading and uh, it makes you feel better. It makes you feel so smart. And small talk goes out the window when you, when you read. I can't agree more with you on that one. I think uh, I only explored books. I have to be very sincere and saying later in life, uh, you know, reading wasn't a big culture at home, so I had to develop it along the way. Um, mm -hmm. And I agree fully to your point that you need to keep books all over the place. And 
Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, don't go to a place if you know you're going to queue for an hour or 30 minutes or 20 minutes without a book. Just keep it with you. You never know. It comes handy. Uh, Correct. So, so that's something I do nowadays when I go anywhere I have a book in with me. Uh, just, to, you know, if I have to wait 10 minutes extra, I'll just read the line or two of that book. So great advice and great question. Uh, and therefore, the book club of global mobility initiative. <laughs> it, all, <laughs> it all makes sense. Sandra, it's been an absolute, absolute honor and pleasure to have you. I have a feeling we're going to be connecting more uh, in the near future. Uh, I would love to um, recommend to people who are interested to do, um, you know, enroll in the HRM Middle East Summit, the Human Resource Management Middle East Summit, and listen to Sandra's um, when, when she has a speaking opportunity there. Also, do go and uh, look up Sandra. So, Sandra, how do people connect with you? Uh, on social media or where can they connect with you if they want to know more about your book club, about your initiatives? Absolutely. So you currently find me on LinkedIn as Sandra Corona. Um, I am on YouTube as the Global Mobility Book Club. And um, I'm also now on Facebook. So also as Gomo X. So the book club's name Maybe we have missed that opportunity. The book club's name is Gomo X Global Mobility. And the X stands for Expertise, Expats Experience. Okay, wow. And I hope that people uh, come and see us, learn about the Global Mobility Book Club. And for all of those people that are graduating, a title and those little certificates help, but it helps more when you share. I love it. So you can find me there. Thanks for sharing your address and your, where we can find you. And I think the name has a very nice touch to it and, and a meaning. Um, I look forward to seeing you, you know, uh, digitally and virtually. And obviously, uh, any other opportunity we can get to speak to you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming Thank today. On behalf of Ivy Coaches uh, and obviously myself, a fantastic afternoon and a very sunny and dry one, I guess. Or <laughs> yes. promise. Likewise, Coach. Thank you very much for, for inviting me to everybody that is out there. And I invite you to connect with me. I'm always there for everybody that wishes to connect anytime. Thank you. Thank you to Ivy Coaches. As Terminator would say, hasta la vista. Hasta la vista, <laughs> baby. <laughs> you and have a fantastic Bye, Coach. Day. Bye. Bye-bye. You too.